On today's episode of The Joy of Editing, I'll be taking a look at the black and white conversion filter found in Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection. Plus, I'll also show you how to use this filter to enhance color images. That'll come near the end of the video. You don't want to miss that. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it is the black and white conversion filter, found in Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection. Before we start, let's consult the user's guide and find out what this filter is all about. Use this filter to convert a color image into a black and white version and control shadows, highlights, and relationships between the original colors. Three black and white conversion modes are available in the filter displayed in the right panel. The first mode is a straightforward black and white conversion, which is the default setting. The second mode is a tonal enhancer. It improves the rendering of different tonal ranges. The third mode is a dynamic contrast. Creates a stronger and harder contrast effect. Brighter highlights, denser shadows, which is something that really works well with black and white images, if you like that high contrast look. Now let's find out about the tools we can use when adjusting this filter. And they vary depending on the conversion mode selected. The first tool is the color filter. It adjusts the color of the simulated filter and controls the relationship of colors in the image. This filter brightens subjects of the selected color in the image and darkens subjects of the complementary color. And you're going to see how all this works. And next we have the filter strength. You're going to drag the slider to the left to decrease the contrast between colors or to the right to increase it. So once you pick the right color filter, you can adjust the strength of that filter. And then we have a basic brightness adjustment, controls the overall brightness of the image. And then we have a standard contrast adjustment, adjusts the overall contrast of the image. You'll only find this contrast adjustment in the black and white conversion mode. Next, we have a contrast enhancer, also adjusts the overall contrast, but more forcefully than the contrast slider. And you'll only find this one in the dynamic contrast mode. Next, we have method, offers three options with different types of contrast to bring out shadow detail or create a high contrast image. Now you'll only find this one in the total enhancer mode. And finally, we have shadow and highlight protection, which is very important with this black and white conversion filter. Now that we know a little bit more about this filter, let's see how it works. Now I'm sure most of you know we have Nick Silver Effects Pro, which is a great filter for black and white conversions. And for many people, it's their favorite, but this one's really nice too. And I also like to use this filter for color images, which stay tuned till the end, because I'll show you how cool it can be for that as well. But let's go ahead and launch it. I'll launch the filter with the Nick Selective tool. To get that tool, if you don't have it up, just come up to File, come to Automate, and you'll find it right there. Click on that, it'll open it up. And here's Color Effects Pro. I have the black and white conversion saved as a favorite filter. And whenever you favorite a filter, it shows up in this list of filters. I'm gonna click this and we'll launch it. And here we are, and here's the default setting, and it's the first method, black and white conversion. Now, if I click the drop down, you can see we have black and white conversion, tonal enhancer, and dynamic contrast, and they all give you different looks. And my recommendation is to try each one of these. Now, whenever you change adjustments on each one of these uh, methods, when you go to the next method and make adjustments, and then the third method and make adjustments, and the reason I say that is to try all three to find the one you like the best, and it's really quick and easy to do. But when you come back and hover over the different methods, you will see your adjustments that you've made. In other words, whatever you make in each one of these methods, they will be retained when you go back to the method. The only uh, adjustments that won't be retained is the shadow and highlights adjustments. And I recommend that you wait till the very end after you've made all three of the conversions and find out the one you like. Then you can go and work with shadows and highlights because they are global adjustments. So what I'm actually saying is make all three conversions and then once you pick a conversion, the one you like the best, then go ahead and tweak the shadows and highlights adjustments. We'll start out with the black and white conversion. I'll go ahead and try to get the best black and white conversion out of it. Then I'll go to the second method and then the third method. We're going to start out with filter color. Now to get the best results, I recommend go through the entire filter range. I like to drag this to the left and then I'll start to drag it to the right. 
and I'll keep dragging it, watching what it's looking like. You're going to find a spot where it looks really nice. That's the whole range there. Now let's come back, and we'll stop at a range that we like. What I'm looking for is to make the, the blue sky area a little bit darker, because that always looks nice in a black and white image. And maybe, you know, right right there i think looks pretty good now we can adjust the strength of the filter color now remember when we drag the slider to the right we'll increase the strength between the color we picked and it's complementary and then if you drag it to the left you'll decrease that contrast range i think an increase in contrast will help so let's start dragging it to the right see how that sky gets darker up in here which is really cool and I think maybe right about there is good. And now we can adjust brightness. But before I do that, I think I want to adjust the overall contrast. Now, you're only going to find this one in the black and white conversion method. So let's increase the contrast even more. I think I like to do this first before I work with the brightness. To maybe right about there looks pretty good because this image seems like it would look nice as a high contrast black and white conversion. And now let's work with the brightness. Let's see if we can lighten up the brightness a little bit. And also we have our histogram up here that we can look at. See if I really drag it to the right, you can see that histogram really starts to move over to the right. Now, of course, that's way too much. But I think maybe right about there looks really nice. I think I'll be satisfied with that. Now let's move on to the next conversion. I recommend, again, to try all three methods. Let's try the Tonal Enhancer. And after I adjust this and we come back to the black and white conversion, all the settings will be retained. So that's important. So let's go to Tonal Enhancer and let's start out with a color filter here and see what we can do. Start at the left and let's start to move it to the right. Let's go through the entire range and study the results that we get. And we can always come back and stop on the one we like. But let's look at all the range first. Now, what I'm trying to do is get the blue area in the sky really dark. So as soon as I find that area, I'll stop at that point. And I think, whoa, right, right about here, I think is good. Now let's work on the strength. I'm going to start to move it to the right and see how that sky gets even darker. And right... Right there, I think, is it. Now, there is no contrast adjustment, but we do have a brightness adjustment. So let me just lighten it up a little bit, maybe to right about here. But here's something different with this. We have these methods here. This is the first method, and it's usually the one I like the best, but let's check the other ones out. The second method basically is increasing highlights, and that does look really good. And then the third one, I believe, is increasing highlights and opening up shadows. You see how the shadows have gotten a lot lighter. So I don't like that one so much. But number two looks pretty good. It's given me a lot more contrast, I think. So it's basically making my highlights a lot lighter as opposed to one. So I do like that one. So I think I'm going to go with method number two. Now I may want to come back here on the strength and work with the strength here. I may want to pull this back. No, nah, not so much. Actually, may want to increase it a little bit more. Actually, I'm taking it the whole way up to 200%. And now let's retweak the brightness. It's just a, you know, a juggling act here. You just got to kind of get it right the way you like it. And I like method two. The brightness looks good there. Okay, so that's my second conversion. Now, some of these highlights are a little overdone. I would have to come back. I would come back and work on the highlights, protect those from clipping. But in reality, I would wait to the very end after I do my third mode, which will be the dynamic contrast. I do feel I'm a little too over bright here. So I'm going to pull this back. I think right there looks better. And now let's move on to dynamic contrast and you can see there's a real high contrast look here this one may be interesting this may be the one i will like the best but who knows let's adjust it we'll start out with filter color these are the, all the default settings by the way so let's move this the whole way to the left let's drag through the range see what we get and now let's start to move it back remember i'm looking for that sky to be relatively dark and right ooh, but I'm also watching the highlights. See, I don't want these highlights to get all blown out. So there's going to be a little sweet spot, which is, I think, right here. 
Now we can go and adjust the strength. Now we can decrease the contrast between the color we've chosen and its complementary color. We can drag this to the left and decrease that contrast. But in this case, I'm going to increase right here. I like that. Now we have a brightness adjustment again. Let's lighten it up, maybe just, or darken it maybe. I think right about there looks pretty good. And then we also have this extra adjustment here called contrast enhancer. And this is going to really increase the overall contrast. If I move it to the right, it's really going to increase that contrast and see, make it look really blown out here. In this case, we're probably going to want to move this to the left just to decrease contrast a little wee bit to maybe right there. And that looks really nice to me. Now let's go back to the first mode. So here's the drop down. Click right here. Let's try the first black and white conversion. Just hover over it. There's my adjustment. And I like it. Here's the tonal enhancer. I don't think I like that as much. Now here's dynamic contrast. And I think it's going to be dynamic contrast. So I'm torn between dynamic contrast and the black and white conversion. They're both nice, but I think I'm going to go with dynamic contrast. Hey, let me know in the comment section what you think. Which one did you like the best? Because we're all going to see things differently, right? And this is what I love about Nick software. We can really tailor things to what we feel and what we want. We don't have to rely on AI to do it for us. We get to make the choice. And now at this point, I can work with my shadow and highlight global adjustments here. So I think what I'm going to do is protect my highlights a little bit more to maybe right there, I think is good. Now, if my shadows are getting too blocked up, I can open them up by dragging the shadow slider to the right. And I might do that just a little bit to maybe right around there. And I think that's a really nice black and white conversion. But this is the way I like to work with this filter. Do a conversion with all three methods. It's really not long. It doesn't take a long time to do. But this way you can find the right one. And once you're satisfied, we can go ahead and click apply. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are. Now at this point, we can further edit the image now that we have our conversion, and now we can go from there. And now is the time for my tip how to use this filter with color images. And it's a simple one. All you need to do is come to the blend modes here, click the drop down, come down to luminosity. And basically, what that does is it applies that contrast from the black and white conversion to your color image. Now, that's way too strong. So I would take the opacity now and ease it back to maybe somewhere in this area right here, around 45, 44%. Here's the before and here's the after, but you see that nice contrast increase. This is a really good tip for color images. If you wanna pop out some extra contrast, you can use this black and white conversion filter to do it. And now let me go ahead and put this back in a normal blend mode. And let's go ahead and take the opacity of the full way up to 100%. But there it is. There's my black and white conversion. And I think this image, which was just a stock image, by the way, here's before the black and white conversion and here is after. But I think this image makes a really nice black and white image. If you like black and white photography, let me know in the comment section below. Because a lot of folks out there don't like it. But I, for one, love black and white photography. And I started out in a wet darkroom developing black and white images with my father. So I have fond memories of black and white. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And if you want me to start doing more black and white type edits, let me know in the comment section below that as well. Silver Effects Pro is a really great piece of software, but did you think you could get this nice of a black and white conversion using Color Effects Pro? You really can. You need to give it a try. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon, and every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!